One of Lake Orion's biggest parties of the year closed down the streets of the downtown area as the Lions Club's Jubilee returned with rides, games, food, and music. Orion Township Parks and Rec celebrated the official start of summer with a family-friendly event at the Orion Center known as Summer Sizzle. Six local municipalities took part in a charity kickball tournament at Friendship Park. We'll tell you who took home the prize money to benefit the charity of their choice. And U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow received a warm welcome at a brand new event hosted by the Chamber of Commerce. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. The first day of summer officially arrived on June 21st, and several family-friendly summer events arrived right on cue. One of Lake Orion's biggest parties of the year took over the downtown area and also benefited a great community organization. Beginning on Thursday, June 22nd, the streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic for the Lake Orion Lions Club's annual Jubilee. Skirbeck Entertainment Group returned once again to set up the rides, games, and carnival food that Lake Orion residents have come to enjoy year after year. The Lions Club set up the beer tent in the parking lot near Children's Park, where partygoers dance to music provided by Full Tilt on Friday and Scotty Doesn't Know on Saturday. The Jubilee is the Lions Club's largest fundraiser of the year and gives longtime residents a reason to reunite every summer. Oh yeah, it brings a lot of people together. You see people that, you know, you, we start talking about you know, the old days in Oregon and these, I listened to so many conversations in the beer tent last night and it, it's, it is really fun seeing people you don't see very often and they just happen to be coincidentally in town for Jubilee. The Jubilee has been a Lake Orion tradition for more than 50 years. In 2010, it moved to Canterbury Village due to road construction in the downtown area, but it returned in 2014 to record crowds. In 2020, the event was canceled due to the COVID pandemic, but it came back in 2021, and now it's bigger and better than ever. Well, what this means is the money that we raise for the Jubilee is what takes us through the years. So it will help us provide the scholarships for the, the high school kids. It'll help us do the Christmas baskets in December. It's our operating fund that we can make it through the year. So all of the uh, money, especially this Jubilee money, is what gives us the background to continue our service throughout, throughout the year. But this, if we didn't have the Jubilee money, we, we would never, be, we would not be able to complete our mission. So in order that we, um, you know, there was some concern whether we were going to have the Jubilee this year and in previous years because of COVID. So when, when we get the Jubilee approved and we know that we're going to have that capital, we get us through year and provide to the community, whatever the needs might be, it's, it's almost like a sigh of relief. Okay, we can continue our mission. While the Jubilee was kicking off on Thursday evening, another family event was taking place in Orion Township, just a few miles away. On the evening of June 22nd, families were invited to come out to the Orion Center for Summer Sizzle. Hosted by Orion Township Parks and Recreation, visitors enjoyed inflatables, food and refreshments, games and more. Music was provided by Guy Lewis and Chautauqua Express. Parking and admission was free to the public. And thanks to an overcast sky, temperatures weren't quite sizzling. As a matter of fact, the weather was fairly pleasant. Well, tonight we have our annual summer sizzle. And I don't know about you, Joe, but I'm sizzling. It's pretty warm out here. Um, we're very fortunate that it's overcast, so it's not too bad. In years past, it's been typically very warm for this event. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of cloud cover tonight. In 2009, then Township Supervisor Matt Gibb proposed a community picnic to boost morale in Orion Township. That event evolved into Summer Sizzle and moved from Civic Center Park to the grounds of the Orion Center in 2013. Due to budget concerns and other factors, the event almost went away, but the good folks at First Baptist Church stepped up, providing volunteers, food and games to keep Summer Sizzle alive. It's an excellent opportunity for us to just connect with the community and uh, to me it seems to be a win-win because we're able to be helpful, we're able to talk to folks and who knows, maybe somewhere along the line, somebody who needed a smile, somebody who needed somebody kind, 
<laughs> and they'll think about that later. And we're just glad to be able to help. For the second year in a row, Orion Township hosted a fun kickball tournament that invites local municipalities to win money for the charity of their choice. Rochester Hills won the tournament in its first year. Could they repeat the feat? ONTV's Joe Johnson was there and brings us the exciting highlights. On the morning of Sunday, June 25th, Orion Township hosted their second annual Kicking for a Cause kickball tournament at Friendship Park, benefiting Miracle Field. A total of six municipalities took part in the event, including Oxford, Bloomfield Township, Macomb Township, Springfield Township, and last year's champions, Rochester Hills. All six teams gathered at Miracle Field for the opening ceremony, then ventured out to the park's dirt diamonds for some fierce competition. In the first round, Orion faced Macomb and came away with a 6-3 loss. Oxford defeated Springfield 3-1, and Rochester Hills trounced Bloomfield 7-1. In round two, Orion defeated Springfield 5-2, Bloomfield destroyed Macomb 11-5, and Rochester Hills shut out Oxford 8-0. In the next round, Macomb defeated Oxford to face number one seed Rochester Hills, and Springfield moved past Orion to face number two seed Bloomfield. When the dust settled, defending champs Rochester Hills would face Springfield in the championship game at Miracle Field. Rochester Hills got on the scoreboard first with a sacrifice fly in the first inning to drive in a run. It was a defensive battle until the bottom of the fourth. With a runner on first, Nathan Mueller sends one over the left field fence to make the score 3-0 Rochester Hills. He had to be reminded to run the bases to make the score stand. Then in the bottom of the fifth, Firefighter Cody Moresh steps up to the plate with a runner on first. He sends it deep to add two more runs to the Rochester Hills tally. In the bottom of the sixth, an error by the Springfield defense allows yet another run. Rochester Hills added two more runs in the sixth to make the score 8 0. Collision just past second base. In the top of the seventh, Springfield had one last chance to avoid the shutout. The game ended on a pop fly, and Team Rochester Hills celebrates their second consecutive title. The team claimed the $5,000 first place purse to go to the charity of their choice, with Springfield walking away with $2,500. Brian, apparently last year was no flu. No, uh, man, we had a great, a great event out here. It was a lot of fun. First of all, you know, you're doing it for charity, so it's a lot of fun. And the highlight is still the, the game at noon with the, the Miracle League getting to cheer on the, uh, the champions and the athletes. But I got to tell you, our team was strong. I think we gave up two runs the entire day. Uh, and the defense was great and just a lot of good people having a good time. Uh, we have no professionals, uh, as you might uh, as, as might be rumored, but everyone just has a good time. And I'm really proud of our Rochester Hill squad for being back-to-back -back champions. Uh, what do you think the the winnings are going to go toward? Any idea yet? Yeah, I do. We just decided, our captains decided, we had a, a team member that was out here playing last year, Sarah Rodiger, whose husband, she's our planning director, whose husband passed away about a month and a half ago. They have a GoFundMe for their kids, and our team decided that we're going to donate our winnings to uh, our teammate Sarah's uh, uh, children for their GoFundMe campaign. So this is our second annual Kicking for a Cause uh, charity kickball tournament, and uh, we had six teams this year. Uh, we had a couple couple last minute cancellations, but we had an incredible day. We started early and the excitement was in the air. The weather was perfect. Oh man, Orion Township did not come away with a trophy. We were training, we were practicing, but um, it was an awesome day. All, and at the end of the day, $8,000 of, of money is going out to charities in these different communities. It's, it's a great day. What did you end up raising for Miracle Field? Yes, yeah, so we, we raised, um, this year about three thousand dollars will stay here with miracle field and then the rest it lays as we thought and again we were hopeful that at least five thousand more would stay here but uh but it'll go to one of the rochester hills charities so it's uh it's a great day to bring awareness you know we did the exhibition game with the miracle leaguers so people can see what this is really all about but really i like to have fun and and uh, i thought when we first built this field that was my dream like i want to do kickball out here and what a fun way to kind of do it with our rivals but our colleagues around the region so 
The people coming out here today are absolutely incredible and wonderful and have the same goal of having fun and raising money for charity and we couldn't be prouder of everyone who's out here participating. From Friendship Park in Orion Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks Joe, that certainly looked like a lot of fun. Orion Area Chamber President and CEO Joyce Donaldson began her stint with the Chamber in November of 2022 and not only continued longtime traditions, but implemented new programs and events since coming on aboard. Recently, the Chamber hosted a brand new event that is just the latest perk of being a Chamber member. On the morning of Monday, June 19th, the Chamber of Commerce hosted the first ever Good Morning Orion Legislative Breakfast at Spring Hill Suites by Marriott in Orion Township. Chamber President and CEO Joyce Donaldson welcomed those in attendance and introduced Township Supervisor Chris Burnett, who gave a township update. The highlight of the breakfast was an appearance by U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow, who has been representing Michigan in the Senate since winning the election in 2000. Before that, she was a member of the U.S. House of Representatives since 1997. The senator touched on a wide variety of topics during her presentation, including health care, jobs, and manufacturing. Despite Warren Township being a predominantly Republican region, the Democratic senator received a warm welcome. Well, this isn't about party in Michigan. It's about growing our middle class. It's about our quality of life. It's about protecting our Great Lakes. And I'm so excited because we're making things again in Michigan. You know, we've got a manufacturing renaissance going on that's going to help everybody. So uh, that's what I'm focused on. I would say you've received a warm welcome. Oh, I, wonderful. It was really a wonderful, uh, you know, it was wonderful to be here, wonderful to have the opportunity to talk with folks about um, what I've been doing and at the same time, you know, what they're doing. Great small businesses that are here. I just, um, I, I love the ideas, the resourcefulness, the commitment to Michigan. It's great. One of the things I've been most proud of in my term here as supervisor is we work across political lines. I, I, I frankly would love to run nonpartisan because I think it just divides people. And we've done great work with the senator over the last decade since I've been involved. I visited her in, in D.C. probably at least 10 or 12 times. She's always been very receptive to our needs and, and what we have going on in our community. Her grandchildren live here, go to school in our community, uh, and she always makes, makes a point to say that. So we have a great working relationship. Look, if you want to talk politics, I'll talk to you about that off the clock. When I'm on the clock, I'm trying to do the best for our community. I'm super excited how today went. Um, it's our first inaugural legislative breakfast here in Orion Township, so I didn't quite know what to expect, but I was very pleased we were actually sold out. Um, it isn't a huge room here at Spring Hill Suites, but we were really happy that it was a small, intimate group where questions and answers, you know, freely flowed. Senator Stabenow recently announced that she will not be seeking re-election in 2024, and her term will end on January 3rd, 2025. Yet another perk of being a chamber member is a ribbon cutting ceremony for Lake Orion's newest businesses. The chamber recently hosted a grand opening for a business that doesn't have a brick and mortar store, so they had to improvise. On Thursday, June 15th, representatives of the chamber and dignitaries gathered at Cookies and Cream in downtown Lake Orion to celebrate the official grand opening of a brand new business. Macaroni Kid is an online resource for parents looking for fun, family-friendly activities and since they don't have a physical location that's open to the public, Elena Campbell of Cookies and Cream offered to host the ceremony on the grounds of the ice cream shop. Three. One, two, three. Macaroni Kid! It's really humbling, actually. I didn't expect such a great turnout. <laughs> it's, um, it's awesome. It's, such, it's just a reminder of how awesome our community is and how wonderful the people are that are here. I would argue that we have the best community in, in Michigan, if not the Midwest and the world. Oxford resident Krista Nesbitt is the publisher of Macaroni Kids, serving the Lake Orion, Oxford, and Rochester area. If you sign up for their newsletter, which is free by the way, you'll receive emails every Thursday letting you know about family-friendly activities and events taking place in the community. Krista also encourages local organizations and businesses to submit upcoming events. Mainly I seek it out and put it on my website. Um, we love it when people submit their events. So if you, if, if, let's say there's um, a business outside of our area but very close by and they want to put all of their events on there, please do, um, even within our area of course. But 
it could be as something as little as a neighborhood garage sale um, that you want to let families know in our area that you're having your neighborhood garage sale, I will approve that in a heartbeat and put it up on our website. It's an event that you can go to and find cool deals for kids. Done. If you're wondering how Krista earns an income giving away all this great info for free, the website is funded by advertising. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I sell advertising to um, local companies. Um, we have e-blasts available, we have articles available, we have um, leaderboard ads and display ads all available to, um, to our local businesses. So if you're a dentist, a doctor, um, a pediatrician, something like that, and you want to get your office out there, please reach out to me. I'd love to work with you and figure out a plan for marketing your business. For more information or to sign up for the weekly newsletter, be sure to visit lakeorion.macaronikid.com. Even though the school year has come to an end, the staff at the library wants to encourage students to continue their love of reading all summer long. Recently, the library hosted an event geared toward readers of all ages. Let's go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Woo! Blast off! On Saturday, June 10th, the Orient Township Public Library hosted a fun outdoor event to officially kick off its summer reading program. Visitors enjoyed music and games, ice cream and cotton candy, crafts and face painting, and even a rock climbing wall. I, th I think it's wonderful. It's, it's such a fun event. Uh, we always fill the property completely. Um, it's really one of the times where we get to let the library be everything. We've got rock bands and climbing walls, and it's just a day to have a lot of fun. How is this possible? This is possible. We got a lot of grants this year, so um, a lot of it was funded through um, like uh, Dollar General Grant, uh, Michigan Humanities Council, lots of different grants, and then um, like those organizations like Parks and Art uh, or in our center, they bring activities with them, so they kind of host those activities here. So a lot of the fun is um, other people are bringing the fun with them. The goal of the summer reading program is to encourage readers of all ages to continue reading all summer long for a chance to win prizes. This year's event has a bingo theme. It's a bingo sheet this year, so they have to get a bingo, they'll win a free book, they have to do different library activities like check out certain types of material, check out a certain type of book. They also have to read a certain number of minutes or a certain number of books and then they can get bingo bingos to win like free community prizes, free uh, books, and a lot of other stuff. I mean, that's what we really do with the summer reading program is, is prevent the summer slide, and that's through reading. And we don't care what they're reading. If they want to read comic books, if they want to read Tolstoy, it's all great to us, but we're here to encourage them to pick up a book, read, you know, it really helps with their attention span, and you can't do much in life, even on screens, without reading. So we're here to, you know, keep their skills up over the summer, and, and we want the parents to learn those skills, too. So we encourage them to participate in our adult summer reading program. It's really all ages. The summer reading program will come to an end on August 5th with a grand finale featuring magician Cameron Zavara and plenty of raffle prizes. For more information, you can call the library at 248-693-3000 or visit orionlibrary.org. And finally, several times per year, Orion Township offers a chance for residents to get rid of a little clutter while allowing bargain hunters to find some great deals. Recently, Owen TV's Drake Eubanks did a little shopping of his own and brings us the story. On the weekend of June 3rd, members of the community gathered together for Orion Township's outdoor community garage sale. Dozens of vendors at the event offered all kinds of items from power tools to antique beer steins and everything in between. Orion Township invited Shreddit, a paper shredding service, to come to the Orion Center so that community members could shred their sensitive documents. So what we have going on today is our annual outdoor garage sale, which is our largest garage sale. We have about 36 vendors outside, all selling their household goods. Um, and they're, well, it's a little warm out there today. Uh, but they're out there selling all their things. Indoors, the Antique Toys and Comic Book Expo returned to sell vintage board games, comic books, and all kinds of toys. Uh, we have about 20 vendors in the, other, in the dining room that are selling anything from antiques, comic books, um, toys from your past, um, all of those fun collectible things. There were also local comic book artists at the event to show off their work. I did uh, Batman fighting uh, Blunt Man and Chronic for those uh, Kevin Smith fans out there. 
and uh, at the Quick Stop actually, and it was signed by the Quick Stop cast, Jay himself from Jay and Silent Bob, and I signed it, uh, making myself official for the CGC. So yeah, I have those. I also do wood burning art. Uh, I use a wood burning pen. Those typically take me about two to three hours, depending on the size of the piece. I also have my collection of books here, uh, from raw books to graded books and signed Funkos. Usually, um, I show up with like a little bit of personal work, like stuff that I've done, like comic books. So we got the Black Museum, which is based on 1950s radio plays. Um, there's three stories per comic. Different artists would come in and do each story. So we've done three issues of that. Um, usually some other work and then because it's a local show and a lot of people sell like their own comics or toys I usually bring something from the basement to kind of clean out my collection a little bit, so, you know, make room for other stuff So Events like this encourage the next generation of readers to get out there and build their vocabulary by diving into the action-packed world of comic books For more information you can contact Orion Parks at 248-391-0304 extension 3500 for ON TV News, this is Drake Eubanks reporting. Thanks, Drake. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ON TV News. On behalf of the hardworking ON TV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.